I have seen your request, but yeah, yeah, I'm I'm recording. Okay, Tarif. Uh, uh, first, 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 you give your introduction. Okay, then after I'm, you can give your presentation. Hello, MD. Please uh, mute your mic. Yeah. Yeah, Tarif, go ahead. Yeah. Are you speaking there? But we are not hearing you. Damn it, we are not hearing you. No, I, th I think it's connecting. Are you, are you using, I mean, uh, computer or cell phone? No, Tarif, we are not hearing you. We are not listening to you, Tarif. Oh my gosh, what's wrong with it? Uh, Tarif, uh, could you, I mean, end uh, your uh, videos and again, you can send your request. Because uh, we are not like uh, hearing your voice. Yeah. Oh, he's also not hearing. He sent me message. Oh my gosh. Really? Oh God. Okay, Elisa, uh, let's start our session again. What do you think? Again means? <laughs> again means uh, <laughs> let's end this session and let's start again, I mean, new, new one. That would be nice, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Not, not wasting uh, time. Yeah. Mm. Hello. Yes, sir. Now we are hearing yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, we are hearing you. Yeah. Congratulations. Okay, I'm so sorry, so sorry. At first, uh, my call, and I'm saying my apology to all of you because uh, it was really crazy time, and I, I had been having a very hard time here. It's okay. Welcome, welcome to our, I mean, passionate group. Thank you so much for joining here. Uh, you are welcome, and it's my pleasure too. Although uh, it was a very difficult time for me to join here, and uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's perfect now. No problem. Okay, no problem at all. Uh, are you hearing our voice? Yeah, it's clear. It's clear now. I can okay. hear your voice. Okay, it's clear as crystal, I guess. <laughs> okay, that's cool because. Uh, all of this hard work has paid off finally. <laughs> okay. So, uh, is there any other members who are uh, on call? Can you tell me, please? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think all members are here. Okay. So, you don't need to be worried. Just keep your wig on. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you can start. I mean, a timer. Go ahead, yeah. Okay, uh, today I want to uh, talk about English language and uh, how to teach and how to learn, so things like it. And uh, actually, uh, let me... Uh, hello, sir. First of all, uh, uh, I think, uh, please, uh, can we have your introduction, short introduction, your profession? Yeah, uh, that would be nice, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. This is Tahmid. I am from Dhaka, Bangladesh, and uh, professionally, I'm a molecular biologist. But uh, in my free time, uh, I teach uh, English language. And uh, okay, how long? 
how long have you been i mean teaching our field uh, i've been teaching for three years now oh, and right. uh, i'm a teacher by chance because uh, i started to learn english actually uh, i started to learn ielts that stands for international english language system system and then uh, i got a chance to teach uh, in the institution where i learn but so why you sorry for interruption but why you i mean uh, shifted into i mean english world i mean <laughs> what was the reason okay i really like it very much and uh, in my free time mm -hmm. uh, in my free time when i really don't have any work and I need to go to my job then i have uh, i need to use them properly my time mm -hmm. so therefore i have chosen this one as my uh, you can say a part time profession okay yeah yeah so uh, anything else or should i go on with my yeah yeah patient? yeah yeah just i mean start your presentation i uh, we all are waiting for your i mean outstanding presentation yeah <laughs> Actually, uh, okay. it, it's uh, being so tough as long as you're speaking outstanding. Oh However, <laughs> uh, okay, uh, today I'd like to talk about you know, how to teach uh, English language and how to learn when a student approaches for this tool. So, at first, uh, I'd like to say my own story that how do I teach, uh, how about the classroom? Uh, teaching math load and organization planning and behavior of the students. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to go with that. So when I first uh, started to learn my teaching, then at first uh, I had a main concern that I should understand my students. Because uh, if I really don't know about my students, their psychology, what they really want to learn, and how much passion they have for the English language. So these were the, my primary concern, my initial concern. And I shared this uh, with my, my teacher that uh, I really want to know the uh, psychology of the student. And he said, yeah, exactly, you're right, and it's the best approach. So that's what uh, I started to understand the psychology of student. Uh, then uh, when I started to take class, then uh, again, it's on psychology. Uh, I was uh, trying to find it out that uh, their weak zones, what they have already learned in English language and their strong zones, that how much uh, they are capable uh, to learn even more. So this kind of things. So that's what I started. And then uh, I really, uh, find out that uh, it's really important to make a great relationship with my students because uh, if there is any communication gap with my students then uh, I can't teach them and they can't get nothing from me so uh, I emphasize on it and make a, a good relationship with them and I uh, used to make relation on their performance basis at first, for example, I used to say to them that uh, you are doing good or better or best. So they used to give me feedback, ask me questions. And that's, that's how uh, we have made a great relationship. And uh, then it's very important to talk about the organization of the classroom, for example. Okay, uh, classroom organization is very important uh, because sometimes it's very essential to make classroom very short or the, the number of students is, is very um, limited number of students. This is because when some uh, particular uh, theoretical uh, information I should give them, they rather uh, prefer that there should be in, in very few numbers and they do not prefer to be in huge number because that 
with uh, hindrances to their study. So I prefer to uh, keep it small when I give the very precise information to them. And then uh, when it's their turn, for example, when they need to practice themselves and then to talk, uh, they need to write, share. So then uh, I organized the large group of students in the classroom that make them comfortable with them better sharing, better understanding. So uh, that's really helped them much. And so now Tari, I will... Uh, so Tari, okay. uh, I have a question for you. I mean, what, uh, what are the difficulties, I mean, you know, like uh, you faced uh, while you're teaching English? Okay, uh, there are a few difficulties, of course, because I'm not a professional English language teacher, so it is really very difficult. In particular, when it was a question out of my context, for example, when it was not uh, from uh, IELTS related, then it was very difficult for me. For example, when they asked me a question about the basic grammar, I knew it, but uh, explaining them was really very tough one and uh, also managing them that uh, i think it's very hard to uh, what do we call that hard not hard not to crack something like that yeah hard not to crack it, right it, yeah hard not to crack. yeah yeah so it's uh, you know but uh, it's very difficult like while giving a lecture i mean speech to the student <laughs> so yeah that's true yeah because of i mean a uh, lack of practice you know like uh, we didn't share our knowledge as much as possible yeah and uh, i had very limited uh, amount of experience on teaching so that's what made my job very difficult okay great okay go on yeah, carry on and uh, okay uh, now i i'd like to talk about the organization uh, for example, how do I organize my lesson, things like this. Uh, and teaching English or teaching anything, I think it's, uh, uh, it's more about lesson planning and less about anything else. Because uh, if your uh, planning is perfect, then everything is perfect. Because you are confident to the students and uh, telling them uh, with much more Emphasism. So it really helps. So I really spent uh, much time on it, on lesson planning. And when I do make lesson planning, I try to make it simple. For example, I try to uh, make uh, lesson planning from the beginning. I put the very basic information at first, and then gradually I become harder for them. So that's uh, one of my tactics to lesson planning, to, to make lesson plan. And also uh, it's very important uh, when I plan for the students uh, to think about their um, achieving uh, capability. For example, uh, if I give them lecture for an hour, that is stretch, then it would be very difficult for them to get and to receive, receive the information correctly. So therefore, I try to allocate time in fragments. For example, I could have 20 minutes, then I give them a chance to talk about, and I try to give them kind of ways, ask uh, kind of easy questions, how they're understanding, for example. So that's what makes uh, classroom very engaging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, asking quiz uh, when uh, you are teaching something and you definitely want to know that uh, how your students are doing. So one of the best ways to ask uh, quiz or give them quiz about your particular topic. And uh, I really want that uh, they respond uh, in positive ways. So I always prefer to give them the easy quiz. Therefore, they, they respond to 
and uh, they become happy and I become happy. And although my main intention on through the quiz is not to judge them, but to engage them with my study. Yeah. Yeah, this is like a great, I mean, teaching methodology, methodology that, you know, every teacher should have, right? Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, to which, uh, to which standard uh, uh, did you teach uh, for the first time when you started? Okay, uh, it's ironically. I say ironically. Uh, I had to start with the IELTS, and uh, as you know, it uh, stands for International English Language Testing System, and there are wide uh, categories of uh, students join there. For example, students who have passed their intermediate a level of study and also uh, university graduates and sometimes mm -hmm. even uh, professor uh, i got a math professor he joined my class when i started so uh, it's really very difficult to say exactly that which levels students are i i am getting and uh, you might expect when really teach ielts you know like uh, sometimes uh, students are far more better than teachers Sometimes it happened. Yeah, I this think. Is, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on, sir. Go on. Yeah. So yeah, he, you're right. So you know, like in our campus, like uh, his name is Bibi, okay, and he is a topper, uh, and he knows like uh, how to pronounce the word. He knows like how to tackle the words in which context. Okay, so sometimes I, I mean, like it. It matters a lot, you know, like if students are better than teachers. But, uh, yeah, and yeah, but, but, you know, like teachers are professor, I mean, they have like a lot of experience, like how to tell the situation, how to tackle the conditions. So they're, you know, pedagogic and didact didactic is very different rather than, I mean, students. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, as long as uh, I need to teach uh, students, not students, rather test takers, who already uh, have studied a lot on English, they have graduated from universities, they're on the profession. So it's really very hard to uh, go through them. But uh, you said that is uh, confidence that make uh, the things different. For example, in a classroom setting, a student is student and a teacher is a teacher. So that's how make that difference, you know, in a classroom. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, confidence is the best way to I mean, solve our problem. If you are not confident, then you will, you know, lose your words, and you just, I mean, uh, in different world. So confidence, uh, we must have. I mean, everybody has. Yeah, that's true. Of course, it is. Yeah. So, uh, should I go on? Yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? Hmm. Yeah, guys. Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, okay. Just wait for a moment. Uh, guys, like, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask. Or, uh, yeah, I mean, to Tarif. Okay, go, go on. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, in order to class, uh, in order to make classroom even more engaging, I have some other techniques too. For example, uh, sometimes I reorganize uh, my classroom. For example, uh, I give them round table to sit sometime and sometimes uh, sit back to back when taking exam, and uh, sometimes face to face sitting. So all this, all these things makes uh, kind of a uh, very different environment in same classroom. For example, in the same stage, you are acting differently. So that uh, gives the classroom versatility and even more engaging, more engagement by the students and with the teacher. So that, that's why I really like it. And as a teacher, I think uh, it's not just about teaching and lesson planning and, and uh, rearranging the classroom, but it's also very essential to uh, master on some other skills. For example, how to draw pictures, 
and uh, how to describe any process and this is very important and maybe you are watching uh, the whiteboard here on my back so i used to use this board uh, for drawing okay and uh, how to describe a process bar chart pie chart everything so this is very important too and making fun uh, drawing cartoon so these are all of the uh, parts uh, to become a good teacher and that's what i've been trying to do i think you know? uh, we need also i mean a uh, good temperament and the way of i mean treating students okay in a very humble way and our attitude uh, must be it's like very naive or humble so i i mean like all qualities uh, should be needed yeah there are lots of qualities included to be a good teacher yeah it's like humbleness uh, politeness mm. and discipline and mm. you know a uh, good attitude and you can you can tell i mean in very every you know like uh, critical conditions so we have to i mean we have to uh, apply them in our teaching i guess yeah i want to say one thing uh, yeah yeah to to become a good teacher uh, i think uh, most of all uh, there are lots of qualities included but most of all uh, i think it is my experience uh, to be a good teacher we have to maintain our ego i think uh, what yeah. do you think about this yeah exactly yeah we have to maintain yeah. ego yeah uh, yeah that's true we... and uh, hmm. yeah and uh, that's what i mentioned to uh, understand the psychology of the students uh, when i started my presentation because that's make uh, to be very lenient uh, to the students and uh, and it helps to uh, control own psychology helps uh, restrain and also how to behave perfectly with them so this all other part that how do you understand the psychology of students yeah it's it's uh, you're right you guys are right it's very essential to be very humble very polite very sincere in the classroom yeah yeah hello yeah yes, yeah we, we are hearing yeah we are listening uh okay uh should i should i go on yeah yeah sure the stage is yours <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah so uh yeah and the information i have provided it's all about active learning so i really want to focus on the passive learning okay as long as it's language and uh, always you cannot depend on active teaching it is a wise decision to uh, test students with uh, inactive setup or inactive participation or arranging inactive participation for example while you are teaching how to develop listening skills so it's better to show them a uh, movie which has a uh, perfect audio script and also uh, providing them uh, any kinds of element like this for example cartoon animation movie so they are actually thinking that they are watching movie but in fact uh, that's not it's, it's uh, solving the purpose of teaching you know, and uh, this is really very helpful yeah so i think uh, i think we can watch i mean uh, a rom com romantic comedy uh, and sci-fi okay science and fiction i mean documentary also we can watch that to improve our i mean english yeah so there are i mean lots of i mean tools or framework that we can follow to improve our english yeah you are right but in the classroom setting there are some restrictions for example uh, you are talking about science fiction mm -hmm. maybe uh, some of the jargons are being used there for example very difficult word or uh, yeah. name which are really uh, unknown for the students so that can make really situation very tough even even worse so uh, it is 
sometimes uh, uh, better to use uh, universal universal uh, content, for example, news or general uh, information providing materials, such as uh, I mentioned, Hartman or any uh, famous uh, movie script. Yeah, they, they are the best option. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for students, I mean, uh, if they, uh, you know, like choose, I mean, children, I mean, children books or, you know, like children movies, okay, it is related with, I mean, educative and informative, then they will learn, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right, yeah. sir. So it depends on, I mean, you know, like student, like what kind of student you are teaching. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, uh, what kind of student uh, they are and also their um, achieving capabilities, how much they can uh, receive. Yeah, all of the things need to consider. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Yeah. And I think I am just uh, getting finished. But uh, two things I need to mention about uh, checking record. Uh, this is very important. I try to uh, record their achievement in every class and make a note and uh, their achievement I, I write. And uh, after a period, period of time, for example, a month later, I try to give them the overall, uh, of, overall scenario of the performance that you have done across the months in, in this way, whether your graph is upward or down, for example. So that's what make them really uh, to think. Uh, they think themselves that, yeah, maybe I can do better, so maybe chance to do for the future, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to reorg students, and uh, I love to reorg them equally. For example, I do not, do not uh, select any particular student that you are the best one on your profit design. But I really try to appreciate all of them and uh, few, few uh, cases exception <laughs> because uh, sometimes, uh, unfortunately, some students do kind of stupid things. Mm -hmm. So definitely I can't appreciate them this time. You know, like uh, sometimes students are more mischievous. They're very naughty, right? And they will not listen our, you know, I mean, boys. So we have to deal in a very peaceful and calm way. Yeah. And we can give, I mean. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Some... Okay. And uh, should I go on more or end? Uh, can you, I mean, would you mind to tell me about, uh, you have been, I mean, teaching field for a long time, I, as far as I know, right? So can you tell me, I mean, uh, which accent, I mean, um, you would like to choose? I mean, is it like necessary to, you know, go with like British or American or Cockney or, you know, any other accent? So what do you think about this? Basically, it's not, uh, that much important. For example, uh, when you take the test IELTS, um, so there it's not important that which accent you are speaking with, rather how your pronunciation is. This is the most important. And any other standardized English testing system, they do the same thing. Okay, so it's not basically important, but if you really want to be the part of a particular language, Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to prove your, uh, if you, your uh, dominance on it, so I think it is better to have a, a accent, you know, a particular accent. Okay, uh, what about, I mean, uh, neutral accent? Can we go with, I mean, neutral accent? <laughs> is it better? Yeah, it's okay. And neutral accent is an accent, is an accent, sorry. A neutral accent is an accent. 
So no worry, it's, it's your dialect. <laughs> no problem with that. But yeah. uh, it's first of all, it's very essential to have perfect pronunciation and any accent you can choose. But I personally prefer the British accent because uh, it's their property. For mm -hmm. example, if you want to learn Arabic, then in my opinion, try to copy so the Arabians. Okay, if, if you want to learn uh, Italian language, so they make the Italian people, not others. Yeah, it's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me about, I mean, English history when it was started? Yeah, could you elaborate more? Sorry? Can you tell me Sorry? about, I mean, English history? English history? Yeah, history. So, uh, okay, but first I would like to say that uh, maybe, unfortunately, it's, my, it's not my concern, <laughs> and I'm not the students of literature as well. Uh, my only concern was and is about the English language. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, I can't uh, provide you much information on literature, story, history about it. Okay. Yeah, but uh, one thing I can say that is uh, this is not basic language. It's a kind of uh, mosaic. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mo mosaic. Language. Yeah, it's, it's a mosaic of languages. And mm -hmm. many different languages fused together. For example, Greek, Arabic, uh -huh. and German, French, Spanish. Definitely. They all fused together and made this new uh, yeah, new languages. Yeah. And before uh, 16th century, uh, there there were hardly any evidence that any uh, research paper or any history books or any science books were copied or made in English. Rather, they were in different languages. But after the 16th century, um, English became such to very dominant over the other languages and it appeared as a new one and it's dominating till the day today yeah exactly like uh, before you know like all english period i mean 500 to i mean 1066 okay uh, the language english language is very dominant it was very marginalized and it was i mean third language the first language is like uh friends okay most of the people i mean they were speaking French, and then after, I mean, German, and at the end, I mean, you know, English. So, like, uh, there were, I mean, many invasion between, I mean, countries, okay? And uh, after invasion, I mean, uh, English uh, has been more, you know, popular, and it has been more, you know, like, uh, famous after invasion of many countries. Yeah, and when the British become the imperialist and they make uh, the world as colon different kind of colonies, for example, uh -huh. in the South Asia, we see, and uh, across the globe, they made colonies and they planted the root of this land. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I have to say something, yeah. Uh, uh, what do you think about this? Your English language is uh, imposed by uh, the British or it is happened itself? Very critical uh, question. Yeah, I want to know the view. <laughs> yeah, it's very critical. And actually, if I really very fair on this answer, I, I should say they actually imposed. Yeah. For example, here in the subcontinent, in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, you know, all of the um, judicial system, science, everything were made in English when the British people came here. And uh, as a civilian, we had no other alternatives but to learn English and but use English. So uh, I think it was more about um, imposed rather than arbitrary learning. Yeah.
Sir, uh, have you gotten me? Yeah, Sandeep, did you get? Yeah. Did you get the answer? Uh, can you please uh, repeat it again? Uh, sound is not clear, or so clear. Can you uh, can you hold the mic and speak? Uh, like uh, the <laughs> what is your name? Oh, he's doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to do so. Uh, is that okay now? Yeah, you have to. I mean, speak like me. I think. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. Bye. But we are okay. getting you. Yeah. I think only Sandy sir is not getting you. I mean, boys. Yeah, you can. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, what I mean is, uh, to be frank, British people, uh, British imposed this language to their colonies. For example, mm -hmm. here in the subcontinent, when the East Indian Company came, they made all of the judicial system, judicial papers, science paper, and everything they made in English. And as a civilian, the people from these uh, colonies, they had no other choices but to learn this language. So at okay. first, it was the imposition. They forced it to learn. And then it, mm -hmm. it, it uh, flowed naturally. Okay, as long okay. as you need to learn it, there are no other alternatives. So you are spending time, you're learning it, mm -hmm. you're teaching it. So that's how it thrived. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. First of all, it is imposed. Yeah. And then it happened itself. Yeah. In my opinion, it's my opinion. I, I can say that okay. it's for sure, but uh, it's my personal opinion, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. I got. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, there, it, it will be a debate, you know, it's an academic study issue. Uh, some mm. may say, okay, uh, people chat the plan, and some may say uh, they imposed it. So uh, mm. I really don't want to go in deep. I said my opinion. Mm. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, uh, any other questions, sir? Okay, I have. Yeah. Uh, Elise? I want to say something. Yeah, Elise, go ahead. Uh, I think you are teaching like IELTS also. So I um, have one question regarding this point. So what are the tips for IELTS reading? And can you hold just for a minute? And I have some water first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take take your time. Yeah, it's a very common question, sir. <laughs> IELTS uh, reading is a very common question, that how to improve score in IELTS reading. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of information in the website, and uh, many teachers have provided many information. But uh, to be very frank, I'd like to say one thing, that is, uh, uh, how about your concentration ability? concentration ability plays a big role on reading test. For example, you are learning all the tips, skills, everything, but the concentration level is not up to the mark. Then maybe it will not work. And uh, from my personal experience, it happened with many students. So they learned everything, they studied for a long time, the concentration problem is uh, making them suffer. So that's a one, one point. And the other point is uh, most candidates, to be frank, they don't want to learn skills. Rather, they just simply, simply want to learn about the techniques, tips, and secrets, strategies like this. But IELTS is a very practical test. And there are no ways to learn just about tips, tricks, and avoiding skills, no way. So, uh, learning skills are very essential. For example, as long as a reading test is concerned, uh, you can think about that uh, how to read fast, okay, speed reading, and uh, also uh, reading in chunk, not reading the whole, whole, not sorry, not reading the whole sentence, 
quantified rather make chunk of reading passages, reading sentence that will really make sense and uh, you can really do better for the test yeah and and another thing this is very important for reading test that is the uh, imagination as you are going through the test if you can imagine most of the thing that really help you and uh, people who have the issues with concentration uh, it's a great tool to overcome um, concentration problem and to focus on the reading test itself yeah So one more question regarding this, like how we could uh, like read like this in this speed, how we can like develop our speed reading skill. So are, are you asking about the speed reading that how to develop? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's very simple, I think. Uh, first, uh, you can go to Google and search their Jap reading. There is a uh, online website that is uh, Jap reading okay and there you can copy your text and they have given the option that increase the speed of the word they will show on the screen okay so you can increase them gradually and uh, there will be rapid movement of text uh, rapid movement of words so try to focus on them and if you go through this process your brain will be well trained and it will really help you to read uh, fast. In other words, learning speed reading. Yeah. And other thing is, this is very practical. That is, uh, you can set a time. For example, you if you are taking a thousand word uh, uh, passes or an article, at first think about, okay, you will take 10 minutes to understand. And then the next day, try to use nine minutes. Okay, give a limitation as you progress. And uh, if you can uh, keep it within five minutes, I think you develop a lot. Yeah. So this really helps. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, guys, if you have questions, you can have. Any yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have one more question. Uh, so, uh, how to develop uh, listening? Uh, yeah, listening is uh, difficult for me. Uh, it is uh, difficult for me to understand uh, when I listen. When I listen documentary and YouTube. Uh, when I listen uh, movie. Uh, when I listen movies. Yeah. Uh, it is difficult for me to understand how to develop it. Yeah, there are two things, rather three things. At first, uh, it is very essential to understand the topic itself. For example, you have uh, started to watch a movie random based and uh, uh, in the middle of the movie, you are finding that you don't understand nothing. But if you know that in which topic they're talking, uh, going through and what's the development, then it will really make your process very easy. And uh, same thing happened when you go for the IELTS listening test. And just uh, mm -hmm. before giving the uh, audio script, they will tell about the topic. For example, uh, they may say that now I will talk about the university graduation ceremony, things like it. And then all of the recordings, it's all about that particular topic. So it is a very good idea to find out the topic at first, that which topic you're going through. That will really help you. Mm -hmm. And secondly, understanding accents. Mm -hmm. While you watch movie, you definitely uh, accept that uh, uh, there would be wide range of accents would be used. For example, American accent, British accent, Australian accent. Scottish, Cockney, Scottish. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. So uh, you have to be familiar with them, okay? Mm -hmm. Gradually familiar that uh, uh, how they speak, how their way of pronunciation, yeah. And mm -hmm. finally, again, uh, it's a matter of uh, speed listening. Now, not mm -hmm. speed reading, speed listening is very important. Yeah, and uh, in not glance speed listening, 
there are a few um, applications you can download. For example, uh, music, speed changer kind of uh, application. Yeah. So you can download and you can increase the speed gradually of your content or the uh, audio script. So gradually, if you uh, go through this process, your ear, your brain will be well trained and I hope you can do better. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so so I have a question. Uh, like there are you know four skills. I mean, reading, writing, speaking, and listening, right? So which is the most I mean important in our English language, and why? You know, uh, if uh, I really can't give this answer in specific because I think all of the four modules are same. But if you think about that, uh, your environment demands uh, more about speaking and less about reading and writing, then maybe in that situation, speaking is, is the most important one. And uh, there are many situations where you just need to uh, give focus on reading. For example, your newspaper editor, you need to read many, many things and write many, many information. Then maybe listening and speaking is not that much important. So. Actually, it depends on situation, uh, depends on profession. Uh, but I think personally that uh, maybe the speaking is the most essential because it gives the chance you to tell other people that you you know about English or you know about a particular language, and uh, that's really help you to boost your confidence on particular languages. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. I think speaking is most important because if you speak, uh, then you can communicate, you can share your ideas, you can share your views, you can share your perspectives, you can share your culture, you can share your whatever you have. Right? So mostly, I mean, people, you know, like uh, they emphasize, emphasizing, I mean, on speaking rather than writing, reading, but all are important. I'm not saying like, you know, reading is not important. Uh, listening is not important all are important all are like significant to i mean enhance our i mean speaking or you know like any it could be like anything yeah that's true and but the problem is you're right that uh, you think that speaking is the most important the problem is you have to be a good listener in order to become a good speaker yeah so a good listener so is a good speaker so, uh, you know, yeah. like what Buddha says, like, you're not listening while your mouth is open. So you have to be very careful for that. You have to be very cautious for that. So if you are listening, I mean, clear, clearly or slowly or gradually, then you will improve a lot. And yeah, yeah in the same way, I also improve uh, by lips and bounds, you know, I listen a lot. Whatever my friend uh, was saying, I just I mean, listen all around the club uh, rather than like speaking. So, yeah, listening is most, I mean, essential factor for every speaker. Yeah, I I asked my question for this reason. Yeah. Yeah, listening is important, very important to speak. Mm hmm. Sorry, sir. Uh, can you repeat, please? Yeah. 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 Listening is uh, important uh, to speak. First of all, uh, we need to uh, properly listen for speaking. Yeah, of course. It's yeah. like it's like baby, you know, like when child learns the language, he differentiates the words between black and white, and day day and night, and he chooses. I mean, simple and easy words. Uh, in his mind and you know like at the end i mean uh, he imitates i mean his parents his i mean uh, neighbors right so so i think this is the process uh, we have to follow if you are uh, not first of all children yeah first of all uh, children uh, listen properly yeah please speak yeah of course yeah so yeah, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is true. Yeah, it is this, true. For for 
for for for speaking uh, we need to listen first properly yeah listen more and more okay yeah yeah, yeah. And then you will be a, you know like eloquent speaker mm -hmm. if you are not listening i mean a good speaker. yeah yeah attentively then you will not become i mean good speaker in future yeah is speaking is depend upon uh, listening <laughs> we can say this yeah of course not only <laughs> listening but you have to i mean apply your method okay you have to i mean do i mean exercise it's like brainstorming it is like uh, equilibrium you know like uh, we have to do i mean in same way uh, listening at the same time i mean speaking yes that's true Yeah, okay. So guys, uh, please ask our I mean, tutor, instructor, motivator. So you can ask any queries and questions to him. Yeah. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yes, sir, do you have questions? Any queries? No, no. No, let me uh, to add a uh, Tala uh, statement like uh, speaking, okay? Here in my, my country, especially in Bali, there are so many uh, kids, uh, children, and adults who speak uh, more than uh, English. They also speak like Chinese, uh, Dutch, uh, and then yes. Korean, something. Yeah, uh, so many languages, okay, because uh, they, uh, I mean, like, uh, there are so many visitors, so many tourism, uh, so many tourists, so that uh, have to learn uh, about uh, speaking. Okay, I think, yeah, I, I agree with uh, Tahmid about uh, the most important thing is uh, speaking for uh, English at first time and then listening, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because uh, it's depend on situation, okay? If uh, we just need uh, to speak or to introduce uh, ourselves and other, so uh, I think speaking and listening is the most important thing but if you uh, i mean just like uh, learn english uh, for uh, your uh, graduation paper or something so i, I think like uh, writing and others uh, more in grammar and others important but uh, as far as i know like uh, you know like what we have written in our paper uh, we are not using in our speaking. Okay, so it's a different, I mean, dimension, it's a different pattern. So there, there were like lots of differences in speaking and uh, whatever, you know, like we are writing. So it's a different yeah. part. Yeah, yeah, that's why I uh, agree with uh, Tahmid about, uh, I mean, uh, depend on situation, okay? It's all depend on situation. What what the purpose uh, you will choose? Yeah, but but I think uh, speaking is the it plays the vital and significant role in our society, yeah. in our community, in our vicinity, yeah. in our surrounding, in our ambience, in our nation. So speaking uh, comes first, rather than uh, reading, writing. Okay, if you want to deliver your, I mean, ideas, thoughts. Uh, and your, I mean, opinion uh, and your advice, then, yeah, speaking is most, I mean, crucial. It's more, most needed. Yeah, but if you want to become a eloquent speaker, then listening is also needed. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, okay, I have a question for you. Uh, there are like so many words in English language, right? There are like billions of billions of words. So, I mean, how many words uh, we we have to learn uh, to, I mean, for a, you know, good communication, I mean, to perfect in English language. So wh what is your opinion? I mean, what is your advice? How many words we have to learn Okay, uh, you're right that there are hundreds of thousands of words, vocabularies in English language. 
But good news is we need just uh, to learn a handful of them. For example, if you learn around 2,000, 3,000 words, then it would be enough for you. It would be enough for your discipline. For example, uh, if you are studying medical science, so if you learn around 3,000 words, uh, 2,000 words are related to medical science and uh, um, general words around 1,000, then it would be okay. So it, it depends on the uh, any given situation or particular discipline. So because, you, become... because you know, like uh, most of the words, I mean, they are adding day by day, right? So many words, uh, I mean, which we don't understand easily. Uh, there are like lots yeah. of idioms, good news phrases, is, yeah, jargon of words. Yeah. Yeah. Good news is, uh, good news is, uh, if you just need to, the words which are very essential for you, for your use, okay, for the use of your discipline. Hello? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, it's not about uh, you have to learn these hundreds of thousands of them. It's not important. You know. But I personally learned around 2,000 words. Uh, 2,000 words means uh, unknown words. Uh, yeah. While I start to learn about IELTS. And maybe now, to be frank, around 2,000 words uh, since then. Not more than this. Uh -huh. you know. So, but you know, like uh, our friends, I mean, they have been learning, I mean, a numerous of words, okay, in our campus. Okay, uh, my friend is also, I mean, he's learning, okay, he's on the way, he's on the road, and he has been learning many words. And uh, if he utters like any words, okay, then I will not understand. I need to check in dictionary, okay. <laughs> so, so if he, if you, you know, like, tell me uh, the meaning of that word, then it's very uh, problematic for me. So, I mean, how can we get rid of this problem? Yeah, you're right. Not only it's about the pronunciation problem, but it's also about the, their use. Yeah. Okay. Their use would be kind of uh, unnatural. It would not be colloquial, not with the situation. Uh -huh. And it will sound very, very, uh, totally unnatural while you listen to them mm -hmm. or while they're using any uh, kind of written piece. So uh, th that's not natural. So it uh, is better to uh, understand uh, with the situation. For example, uh, go to the newspaper, go to the magazines and journals. Okay, so learn with the context, with the situation, then in which situation or kind of word and phrases are used. Uh -huh. Then only then he can pronounce better. He can recall the word and appropriate use them. So that is the best idea. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's great. Uh, but like, how can we get uh, that sort of words? I mean, uh, is there any you know channel or is there any I mean dictionary we can get that? Uh, dictionary, uh, I don't recommend. I there. Are, recommend to buy magazine in English language magazine any magazine for example time magazine or economist you can buy yeah. uh -huh. and uh, while you read the text read the article try to underline the unknown words the meaning you don't know so underscore it and uh, yeah but I think uh, we'll get the very difficult words in I mean, newspaper as far as I know like mm -hmm. dilly dallying we never heard of it, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so th that that is uh, that is a jargon, or yeah. it's uh, really yeah. based on a particular discipline. You can ignore it, okay? You just can focus on the words you need, or uh -huh. the words you really need to uh, learn to use in daily life or in your discipline. Yeah. Okay, it's like uh, we have to learn. I mean, colloquial or daily speaking or vernacular language. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Right, yeah. sir. Right, sir. Okay, but I think uh, if you go for, I mean, seminar or if you go for presentation, then, you know, like, it is like icing on the cake, I, I guess. It's like 
put cherry on the cake. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you learn, you know, like any uh, new words, then they will be like surprised and make make people all also like uh, confused. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Even in that situation, you are learning with the context, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Not uh, out of context. Yeah. You know the topic, they are going through a particular issue and you are cherry picking this kind of words and you remember it and you can use it. Okay, yeah. so that's uh, another option. Yeah. yeah, but I think uh, it uh, depends on, I mean, situation, like what yeah. kinds of people you are talking. Okay, if you are from, I mean, English literature yeah, background, audience. yeah, okay. literature background, then they will, I mean, you know, different uh, sorts of jargon and yeah. like idioms and phrasal mm -hmm. words and colloquial language. So I think uh, it depends upon situation and, I mean, Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay, my advice is uh, maybe uh, during presentation or something, we have to use a Google Translate <laughs> to understand. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I I think uh, you can go with I mean simple words, uh, which is easy yeah. to understand everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, language is language is for I mean yeah. communication, not for making hard, hard, you know, not yeah. not not for making I mean subtle, not for making yeah. difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sure. Yeah, you're right. I am one hundred percent agree with you. Some people are unfortunate try to learn kind of very difficult idioms, phrases, and words that nobody knows. Things like it. So it has no use because uh, it it will sound alien, you know, when you speak. To <laughs> and uh, it has no use to express yourself. So what's the use of learning? There are no there are no logic to learning that way. Yeah. Yeah, but I think uh, you must learn. Uh, it's not like necessary to learn. Uh, you can learn. Because everyone has like different perspective and different persona, right? It is not like necessary to learn and memorize like those words. Yeah. So like it depends on like a person. Like if he is uh, from, I mean, you know, <laughs> what happened, Miller? <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's okay. Yeah. So okay, so uh, I yeah, think uh, I think uh, I think we asked uh, like so many questions uh, related with English. Yeah. So guys, uh, if you have any questions and queries, uh, you can ask our I mean presenter. Sangit uh, sir, Salahuddin, and uh, Sazana. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, so um, <clears throat> I have uh, one more question uh, for you. Uh, what is the easy way, easiest way to develop vocabulary? Would you guide us, please? Yeah, uh, thank you for your question. Now, I think I also have uh, mentioned that how to learn vocabulary. That is uh, context-based learning. Okay, my uh, my opinion, I think it's a better idea to buy a journal or magazine. Mm. For example, a Time magazine or uh, let's say Economist. What about I mean? Uh, what about yeah, reading, go, reading novel? Reading novel is not that much effective because uh, there the word that we used uh, usually they are based on a very specific topic not uh -huh. wider not uh -huh. to use for the everyday use okay uh -huh. but when you go for the news or magazine then uh, you get a very very versatile quality or different types of vocabularies yeah uh -huh. but i think uh, we all also get i mean uh jargon words in newspaper i guess so we can i mean omit that or what 
we can ignore that uh, kinds of vocabulary yeah that's true but i i don't think so that uh, you you get that much that much uh, amount of uh, vocabularies which uh, based on on any particular discipline i think there are very limited number so yeah and uh, that's how you can underscore the unknown words learn the meaning from the dictionary and go through the context again and again okay next day or the next week then what is happening you are going through the context but actually you're learning the vocabulary and you are learning for life trust me you uh -huh. will learn the vocabularies for life you can use them in your speaking write them and teach them even and uh -huh. uh, that will be your property okay it's not about the property of dictionary okay <laughs> many people uh, opt to choose that uh, i yeah. don't recommend it yeah yeah i think uh, it's uh, sort of i mean talent learning vocabulary and remembering those words okay but i think it takes a lot of time we need to cross an extra miles for that uh, it's like consistency it's like uh, you know regularity yeah yeah and uh, you can't use them if you memorize um, one by one from the dictionary is the one negative point and another point is uh, you are giving your maximum effort, but the next month, for example, you're going back and you say, oh, you lost everything. Uh -huh. It's going back to the drawing board, okay? <laughs> yeah. from the drawing board, yeah. Never-ending business. Yeah, yeah. never-ending business. Yeah, uh -huh. of course. It's like uh, our plans ended uh, in like no small. It's, yes. Yeah, it's like <laughs> come to nothing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mila, you so, want to sir, say something? Yeah. yeah. No, I. No, no, I don't. Uh, okay. Okay, I have a question. Uh, what is the difference between I mean American accent and British accent? There are no uh, significant difference. Rather, it's a while you learn pronunciation. There are um, particular issues. For example, in British accent, they pronounce ah sound. For example, father, mother, okay, God, sister. For example, ah, they are using this word ah. And in, in American accent, uh, it's about ah sound. So, father, for example, like this. Bad. Example, bad, yeah. And uh, there are others, for example, phone, okay. American accent, uh, accent kind of monotonous, almost flat. Mm -hmm. The British accent is not flat. It's uh, based on the uh, harmony of language and rhythm, up yeah. and down, like me. Okay. But but I think uh, British is uh, really hard to understand. Actually, the <laughs> yeah. easy to understand the British language, but the American made that their language is easy. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately there, yeah. there are like uh, so many differences uh, i mean in words in pronunciation in stressing sound yeah. intonation right yeah so there yeah, are lots uh, yeah there are like lots of differences and i mean yeah. language yeah there are a lot of differences a lot of differences uh, as you hear, but uh, basically as, as long as the pronunciation goes then there are no significant difference it's the difference on accent only okay so yeah. there are some uh, misunderstanding uh, between the accent and the pronunciation so i say there are no significant difference between american and uh, american and british accent uh, in terms of uh, pronunciation but there are differences on accent yeah yeah accent and the words choice of words like uh, in American accent, like uh, like cookie, okay. They they said it like cookie, but in British accent, they said like biscuit. Okay, so uh, these are the I mean differences between accent. But yeah, uh, yeah. there are some differences. For example, like a parking lot and cars, things yeah. like it. Pavement, and sidewalks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, lift elevator. Yeah, lift elevator. Elevator. Yeah, it's okay. flat apartment. Yeah, flat apartment. Yeah. 
So there but are they're handful. They're handful. They're handful. Uh, I mean, uh, if you make the list, that would not be too much. Yeah, it's still manageable to uh -huh. coordinate between two languages. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, like, uh, you know, like, uh, we are not like native speakers, right? And I mean, we speak in both ways. Sometimes American, sometimes British, sometimes Cockney accent also. Right? So, I mean, uh, yeah. what is your advice uh, if you are like following American or British accent, like any accent? I mean, what is your advice to, I mean, I learners? Think, yeah. Yeah, go for my, with my accent. Maybe it's not any particular accent. Uh, for example, it's not British and not American either. Uh -huh. But I like British accent because uh, English is their property. I already said that yeah. uh, if you want to learn Arabic, uh, go to so Saudi Arabia. If you want to learn the Ital Italian language, go to Italy. Okay, uh, so uh. in that sense, if you want to learn perfect English, go to Britain, no, not uh, anywhere else. You know? Yeah, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, okay, but we don't uh, speak like native speakers. I think so. <laughs> Neither, I mean, British nor like American, right? So sometimes we speak like Americans, sometimes we speak like a British, right? So, so this is our, I mean, uh, I mean, our, I mean, persona, our habit. Yeah, but. Yeah, true. It's but true, I but, think uh, it's better not to, I mean, copy those accents. This is my perspective, okay? It's better not to copy the accent. You can just, you know, like follow your own accent. I mean, own yeah. your native accent. But the words you pronounce, yeah. you know, very uh, clear or understandable, so that other people can understand you much more better. Yeah, that's a primary concern. And if possible, then learn an accent, no problem. And if you, even if you're going with your uh, own accent, no problem. Neutral accent, Indian accent, British and uh, African accent, no issue. Okay. Yeah, but the uh, Indian accent is, uh, uh, it's like very, you know, stressing sounds, like they, they speak, you know, very uh, different way. I'm not like pinpointing, okay, but yeah, you can go with like uh, your own accent. It's, uh, it's not necessary to, I mean, copy those accent. Kusi is listening, oh my God. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Please don't kill yes, me, sir. okay? <laughs> Yeah, so but but, but yeah. Indian uh, accent is good for uh, listening. Uh, we can uh, understand uh, <laughs> what is the one to say, and uh, uh, another person can easily. Yeah, um, it is very strong. Like uh, huh? whatever you are saying, <laughs> something. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. Okay, I'm not like. <laughs> pinpointing your accent uh, i mean every accent has like uh, their property their asset yeah so we cannot you know like criticize people by their accent yep. yeah that's true right Safita, don't copy. worry <laughs> Safita, don't worry uh, i can uh, understand when indian uh, speak english <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, uh, rather than uh, Chinese English, <laughs> it's very hard to know, to understand because uh, I miss uh, some word when I talk with uh, Chinese. I mean, uh, original Chinese. Okay, hmm. they feel yeah, they're really hard uh, to understand when they say something. Yeah, I think Indian is better than Chinese. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Man. Yeah, we can understand. Thank you, Ella. At least, yeah. So, uh, yeah. okay, I have like one more last question. Okay. I think, yeah, I asked many queries and questions, right? Yeah, you like talkative. <laughs> it's not like talkative, <laughs> it's like uh, interacting, okay? It's like it's like interaction okay. program. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Serious, yeah. Serious, inter serious talkative 
Yeah, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you can ask the last question. And then we leave the session. <laughs> okay. Uh, my question is like, uh, 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 like one word. Okay. Uh, live, live. You know the word live, right? So it has like three functions. Uh, sometimes it is, uh, you know, work. Uh, it works as an as an adjective, as an adjective. It works as an adverb. It works as an, I mean, uh, verb. Okay, so what do you think uh, about, I mean, learning words? Because uh, different uh, different words has like uh, different function, functionality, right? Yeah, yeah uh, you're right, that's true. In that sense, it's very difficult to uh, learn English language, but there are other ways. For example, if you understand the context, okay, a noun can be an adjective. So if you understand the context and uh, you think to yourself that what actually this word is doing. Okay. So therefore that I stress learning on context based, not on dictionary based. Okay. Uh -huh. So you put your word a particular sentence and then you think, is it uh, acting as an adjective, sorry, as an adjective or noun or verb, what it is. Uh -huh. Then you find the answer and you think, okay, so this word is doing that. So that's uh -huh. the best way. But if you uh, go to dictionaries, you will say the same word, it's the adjective, noun, verb, it's a crazy situation. Uh -huh. And it's really crazy situation for the learners, for the beginners. So I really don't recommend it. Yeah, but uh, it has also, I mean, different pronunciation. Live, leave, where, where do you live? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's true, but uh, yeah, that, that's a totally different uh, context, I think, what I said. Uh, uh -huh. Because uh, if you defer the pronunciation, then it's a particular uh, particular type, okay, plus of speech. Uh -huh. For example, a stress on a word can say that is it noun or is the verb. For example, if you say advice, okay, so it's a noun, uh -huh. but if you say advice, then it's a verb. Uh -huh. So, uh, the function about pronunciation is a different aspect. Yeah, like uh, breath and breathe. Yeah, that's true, sir. Yeah, yeah. so there are many, many uh, <laughs> many words. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Many examples. Yes. So, but then uh, in that situation, you have to understand the pronunciation, and then you can guess that uh, actually this word is verb or is that noun. Whatever it is, it's yeah, better. I think we have to focus on pronunciation. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Context and yeah. pronunciation. Context yeah. and content. Uh, content should be in context. Yeah. So this is the methods we have to follow. Yes, sir. So, yeah, um, I think we spend <laughs> we spend an hour, I guess, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So thank you so much, uh, our I mean teacher, our instructor, <laughs> yeah tutor. So thank you so uh, much. I'm the audience instructor. I'm happy to be here, and uh, there are many wise people, many respected and scholars. Uh, I know about it, so it's my pleasure to be joining with you guys, and I'm uh, expressing my apology again because uh, I'm at late. Uh, plus yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's, uh, it's okay. Uh, but I could okay. join at the actual time. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So yeah. we are we are very glad and we are very grateful to you. Uh, and we are very um, uh, glad to have you here. My, yeah. Like. Uh, it's my pleasure. Sir. It's your my type pleasure. of expert. Yeah. Your type of expert we are having here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We are very grateful. Really, very grateful to you, sir. Yeah, we are very gratified. We are very delighted. We are very yeah. um, satisfied with your I mean, speech, the way you talk. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it was uh, really yeah. amazing. Yeah. So thank you so much. It's and useful please, for us. Yeah, yeah. It is. yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, so uh, I think let's end our conversation.
okay and yeah, uh, so yeah. thanks for your participation our teacher welcome nice to know see you next time anytime soon I hope. yeah 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 sure yeah. why not okay. yeah okay, okay. bye bye thank okay. you dawha bye bye okay. everyone have a great day <laughs> okay and okay, good night everyone bye okay. good night bye okay good let's night. let's call it a day good day guys. okay good day sis okay. sorry have a good day madam ishwari madam <laughs> see you tomorrow all yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay just yeah. end end your i mean <laughs> conversation or wishing okay i'm going to end yeah sure okay bye bye